and we are recording and right at four o'clock we will take off. Wonderful. All right, it is four o'clock, so we are ready. I hope you guys are too. Right. Good afternoon and welcome to our self care series focused on meeting the SEL needs that social emotional learning of adults through the arts. This is our fifth session on mindful making. And just a quick note that we are recording this webinar and posting it to our webinar archive and it's live streamed. So you'll be able to uh, come back to this recording later at any time. You can also follow along with the bit.ly that we've shared in the chat and we'll share one more time to follow along with our slide deck and access leader if you wish. All right, and this is hosted by your Hi. DPI Hi. arts education team. I'm Sayward Grindley, your dance and visual arts consultant. And Brandon, you'll hear from in just a moment. Brandon Rader is your music and theater arts consultant. We are led by Dr. Lori Major Carlin. She is our section chief for social studies and arts education. And today we are so excited to welcome our two guests to for today, Michelle Harrell from the North Carolina Museum of Art and Ophelia Stanton from uh, Granville County Schools. So you'll hear from them in just a moment. We are so excited to have them here with us to share their, their expertise and um, just some self-care uh, things that they enjoy doing themselves as well. Our agenda for today includes just a little overview of self care for adults and why we started this session. Then we'll jump right into mindful making with Michelle and Ophelia. We'll do a little reflection at the end and of course, make sure you stick around for your CEU information and some more resources. Our webinar goals for today are to give educators tools to meet their own social and emotional needs. So yes, we care about our students and wanting to give those to them, but we're, today we are focused on ourselves and educators as adults. Some of these include exploring how playing with writing, sketching, and collaging and visual journaling can be part of your self-care plan, along with finding community and support in collaborative journaling with other adults. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Brandon to give you a little bit of background information. All right. So um, back in 2014, Saywords and my predecessors were brilliant enough to realize that they should bring together both arts teachers and non arts teachers and art professionals from the greater world all together in order to have a conference called Arts R for Life. And those are those four R's are rekindle, reflect, reconnect, and renew our love of education and our love of spending time with one another. Um, and so we thought that especially as we are approaching the end of the school year, the most epically uh, challenging school year that any of us have ever had. It was a perfect idea to use the same framework to help educators learn more about their own self care and how to model that for educators or for their own students. So this is, uh, as Sayward said, session five of an eight session arc. And if you can participate in as many of these as possible, we are very excited to have you. Um, this Thursday, we'll have mindful imagination and explore how laughter can be a great medicine for self care. So, without any further ado, we're going to pass it over to the Amelia, the amazing and incomparable Michelle Harrell and Ophelia Staten. Oh, Hello, I'm sorry. Everybody. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Brandon. I'm going to jump in and talk about this really fast. So, today, as we um, are, are, we're trying something new. We're going to try to make sure that you all can see Ophelia's hands. And so I am going to make every effort. Um, I, I learned how to do this earlier um, to pin her her hands to the stage so that everyone can see um, her her content, her hands. And there will be like an invisible middle line that you can drag sideways so that you can see what's going on. Um, so just wanted to give that little bit of, of advice to you as we try something new. All right. All right, there we go. All right, 
So I'm Michelle and Phil, you want to say hi? Hello, say hi. hello everyone. <laughs> So, um, and we'll come back to Ophelia in just a second to begin visual journaling. But before we begin, and Brittany, you can take a break from screen sharing for just a minute. We want to emphasize um, if the purpose of today is not just about visual journaling and making art. Today is about your self care. So, let's first of all want to begin with, you know, Finding a comfortable place in your chair, get comfortable, be aware of how your feet touch the ground, get settled, be aware of how you're going to sort of sit hands on your lap or in at the table. And let's begin by just a few several, um, low, slow, deep breaths, inhaling fully and exhaling fully. Close your eyes and clear your mind of everything that you dealt with today while you become aware of that breathing. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. To the count of five, let's try that. Inhale one, two, three, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five. If you've ever tried to close one nostril, inhale through one, two, three, four, five, and exhale through the other, two, three, four, five. Continue breathing for just a minute and give yourself credit for just showing up today and being here for your own self care. Give in to that need that you have and fighting against that burnout and be present for your own self care. And, and we're not asking you to, for your participation for ourselves because we get the fact that you're human and you might need to go take care of something with your children or somebody at the door, whatever your human needs are, go do that. But allow yourself to be selfish with your full presence today and resist the temptation to multitask. You'll get as much of this as you're able to put into this. Um, so with that, Ophelia, tell us a little bit more about, I, I love the way that you describe visual journals to people. Can you tell us a little bit more about visual journaling? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and just taking a few minutes for you. I know it. In this world of busy and go, it's so hard for us to just take a break and take take a step back and take five minutes. And you, um, I just appreciate you taking the time to be here with us this afternoon. Um, Michelle asked about journals, and um, when I get started into things, I get like laser focused. So if anybody has any questions for me. As I'm going, if you will just drop them in the chat and someone will just let me know that you're talking, but, um. A visual journal for me and I, of course, okay, so Michelle and I agreed as we were planning this, that we would keep it super simple. And as I was packing this morning, I realized I brought my entire house with me. So let's get ready for a ride. Um, I, a journal, a journal can be. It's a container. Let's keep, let's think about it that way. It is a book of sorts. Um, you can have wire bound, you can have um, stitch bound, you can have a tablet, you can have sheets of paper. What's important is it feels comfortable for you to carry around so that it's not cumbersome and you're like, oh, great, that's another thing I have to do. You want it to feel comfortable um, because what I hope to do today is to inspire you to always come back to this container. Um, this container is, for me, it's almost like a brain drain. It's all of my thoughts go in here, all of my, I even call it like a wish cast, those go in here. Um, my work to do, my grocery list, everything it is, um, all of my thoughts go inside of these containers. Um, and it's, what I love to do is when I start a new one, I get so excited because I know that by the time I get to the end, 
it's a totally different Ophelia because the day is gone, if that makes sense. Um, and I love watching me grow through this container. So your journal is whatever it is that you want it to be. There's nothing fancy, there's nothing precious. It is, in my opinion, for your eyes only. Um, if you want to share your creations, great. Um, if not, that's totally fine too. Inside of your container of the remains of your day, it's perfectly fine for you to agree that you're gonna, you know what, I'm gonna make a mess of this thing. I am going to put out my five-year goals. I am just gonna spend time learning about me in this thing. And so that's what I want you to just allow for it to become because it does, it will become if you show up every day to play with it. Good. Okay. All right. So um, let me ask this. Are we ready to dive in? All right. So with this container, I just want to, again, I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, Michelle and I, our, our styles are so different, but yet we create. And so that's um, what's special about the two of us. Um, I love color. And so for me, I live in color. My grocery list looks better in color. Um, I'm going to share with you guys a couple of my pages. And the thing that I want most for you today is I honestly just hope that I inspire you to pick up this playful habit because that's honestly what it is, is you get to play to get to know yourself, to be mindful and present. So um, for your sketchbook or journal or however we want to call it, it can be, and I hope this is all in frame, it can be um, whatever it is that you want to express. It can be um, very, very simple. It can be full on kitchen sink, like usually what I end up doing. Um, it can be doodles. There's so many things that you can do in your sketchbooks. I don't really care about the kind of paper that's in here. I don't really care about the amount of like what it costs because it can literally be copier paper. Um, what I want it to be for you is a place where you can record your day so that you can grow to know and cherish the person who's spilling open in here. Um, a lot of times I will write things and um, <laughs> I guess what's important is for you to get the, the ugly of your day out. Um, and so one of my favorite things to do, and I'm going to flip it so you can kind of see it, is um, I always tell myself like, or I, I think in my head, because remember for me, it is just um, getting the ugly out or getting that, whatever it is going on on the inside, getting it out. Um, I always remind myself if the police needed to come get me for what I wrote here, I can paint over it and collage over it and cover it up where all I see is this one word and I know what was going on. No one else has to know. That's what's important for me. It's getting whatever it is out. Um, so, because we all know that every single day, all the time, our, um, our lives are not, as I like to say, putting on my rosy colored sunglasses and heading out the door. Sometimes we all do have things like, as for instance, um, my son for the first time today is driving himself home from college in Massachusetts. And so I literally sat at my desk, like, you know what? I could. I have enough pent up energy where I could run to Massachusetts and be back here by the time this started. Um, so I literally sat at my desk this morning and I'm gonna flip through because I'm a teacher. I teach high school visual arts. 
And I wrote to myself, like, you, you got to watch your energy, because if my energy is spiraling, my students pick up on that and theirs is spiraling and the whole thing just escalates. And now we're out of control. So um, just Ophelia, watch your energy. And then I sat here because I needed to do something mindless and I, <laughs> I started drawing circles. Oops, and let's see if you can see this. I started drawing circles and I just filled and filled and filled with a pencil and filled and filled, and I could feel everything just kind of leave. And so even if you can find three minutes to just kind of bring yourself down, doing something mindless, and of course I'll come back in and fill these with color or what have you, but just doing something mindless will, um, Kind of get you out of your own head for just a minute and just help you it like you literally feel relaxed your pencils going your um for me it is still a part of being creative because i could have been in the corner you know chewing my nails but i decided that i just needed to do something that was a, a little bit more healthy um so like i said these can be as simple as you want um my really, 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 really good friends know they don't send me presents. They send me their gift wrap and their old wrapping paper because I use that kind of thing in my journals to just kind of glue stuff down and play around with it and just kind of have a good time. So, so that I can stop talking and we can all get started. I just want to talk to you guys for just one second about some supplies um because remember i'm that gal that literally brings the entire kitchen sink so i've got myself a pencil and let's see if we can still keep everything in frame a pencil i've got a pen or like a fine liner or something of that nature i've got my journal which i'll put it back in frame here in a second um i've got myself some markers I've got myself some um, collage bits and stuff like that, which every time I sit to do this, I never have any sort of preconceived notion because then I'm getting in my head and I don't want to get in my head. I just kind of let it flow. So I've got myself some collage bits and this is literally, can we all still see? Yeah, I keep it in like a plastic bag and like dictionary pages or a receipt from Starbucks or um, a cool paper that I found when I was um, in the hallway. I'm a, you know, my students know if they drop it and it's paper, it's fair game for me to glue it down in my sketchbook. So I've got um, that kind of thing where I just kind of keep in a folder and I can pull from that if I need to. Um, so, um, Yep. I was going to say, I noticed that Brandon just held up some stuff. Did he do? It's Let's interesting to see. Did you bring some fodder to Brandon? Well, it, the funny thing is that this desk that I'm sitting at right now is actually where my daughter does virtual school. So okay. I've got a cookie wrapper and yes. a, a UPC code and some cool, you know, post it notes and a flower growing kit instruction manual. And so, yeah, this is just. And of course, these aren't even my crayons, but it wouldn't be my house if there aren't crayons Absolutely. in every room. So. Absolutely. And then. I've got receipts oh. from my fodder and paint pens and colored pencils. So we're all on the right track. All Whatever right. you've got, grab it. If you've got a glue stick or um, in all honesty, if you don't even have that sort of fancy um, anything like a, a, what do you call this? Regular tape on your desk will work. Glue will work. Um, and because, you know, Ophelia always has to grab the kitchen sink as she's leaving. Um, I'm, I'm addicted to color. So I've got watercolor here. Um, if you, you know, you've probably been into like Walmart or roses and you've seen those praying watercolor or Crayola sets those work perfectly. I just ended up bringing these at home. So like a simple one, but this one's like my full on Nelly goes everywhere with me. So if everybody's ready, Michelle has kind of brought us into a beautiful space. I say we get ready to play. Um, 
your play and my play will look totally different and that's there are no rules whatsoever there is no it, it's all about you so for your journal you get to create the rules that's um why i love doing it if you wish to sit here and um write down just bullets of whatever that's totally totally fine um there are it's just so many things that you can honestly do in your journal to make it your own and that's what you want I, you don't want it to look pretty for me you don't want it to look pretty at all because it doesn't have to be this could just be things that make you happy and a collection of things that make you happy so our prompt for today and when um michelle called me and asked me if i would be willing to do this you know of course i'm like oh yeah it'll be great and then i'm like oh no what have i gotten myself into um so i was thinking about it and um one of my favorite, 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 favorite things to do in my journal to make everything okay in my space is to journal about gratitude. And I, I challenge you to be in a bad mood after you've written things that you're grateful for. And there are a lot of times where as a teacher, I can you know how you can just feel that something's off and that ew, we all just need a timeout. I literally will put some music on, um, kind of dim or like shut off a couple of my lights. And I have my students just write down five, six, seven things, whatever comes to mind that they're grateful for. And that's what I'm going to ask you guys to do. So, um, with a pencil or whatever it is that you would like to use, because we can always come back and add color. I just want you to write um, in, can we, yeah, we can still see my hands because now my desk is an absolute mess because that's how I work. I am grateful for, and then if you'll remember, Ophelia is all about color. So grab those uh, crayons that you had, Brandon. And then I literally just start, uh, I think I'm gonna switch this up and do some blue. And, oh, let's do this. I am grateful for. Now, now, as I tell my students, if you ever get stuck on what you want to say, just come back and write the sentence over and over again and something else will pop in your head. Um, I am, and then I'm gonna do in different colors because remember, I just, I love adding color. And then, because it's not on the, the list of things that you need to have, but you probably have something. Um, I think I'm gonna take my glue stick. How is my desk already in this? I'm gonna take my glue stick here and I'm just gonna glue something with color down and maybe I'll bring my watercolors in in just a second, but I'm gonna glue this piece of paper down. And you, I'm gonna, I'll try to remember to talk as I'm working. If you feel the need to just kind of zone out for a minute on your list, that's totally fine. I am going to grab myself some pencils. And if it, can I jump in and elaborate just a little bit too? Um, so one of the things that Ophelia and I both do that she mentioned earlier when she was talking about purging and sometimes you need to purge, um, we both use the um, Julia Cameron's Artist Way approach for morning pages, but not really always following the rules quite so well as she does. 
um, as far as like three pages every morning. Sometimes mine are way more and sometimes they're way less and sometimes it's a page of doodles. Mm -hmm. But for me, th even this gratitude for me to write a complete sentence is a challenge a little bit. For me, it's easier for me to just start with bullet point list and do more stream of consciousness and not worry so much like I started out like affiliate art supplies. It's like spending an insurance to afford my art therapy. Like just like boom, 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 boom. The next word that comes to my mind and the next word that comes to my mind that sometimes to encourage that stream of consciousness, just uh -huh. let yourself have a few minutes without letting your pen stop moving on the paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it could be just random things. I mean, uh, this was one that I had done the other day. Um, I, I just so happened to have a quiet morning at home. Um, so the thing is, I was very grateful for my morning cup of juice, that coffee, and I had no plans. Um, and then it was just like, you know, I, I'm, I drew a little sunshine and because it was sunny and 75 degrees. Um, so you can doodle, you can write bullet points, you can, um, honestly, whatever it is that feels most comfortable, that's what you do. And then we're going to have a minute after you keep working on yours to kind of come back and look at what you wrote so that we can do something else with it. Is You did it. Yes. How are we doing out there? Are we good? Anybody stuck on anything or need um, questions or anything? Because I can answer anything that you have. That you'll, maybe you're looking at your page and thinking like, oh, what I don't want you to do, um, as sometimes I have to tell my students, put your blinders on because this time is all about you. So um, even if the, one thing you're grateful for is for when that girl Ophelia will stop talking so you can get back to what you're doing, write that down too. It's totally your time to play. I'm just going to glue this stuff down. And
I have one more question while you guys are working. How are you guys doing on your list? Because for just a moment, what I would like for you to do is, um, whoops, let's see here. What I would like for you to do here is um, take your take a look at your list, and, and maybe you've written down five or ten things or whatever. I want you to just have a look at that list with a colored pencil or whatever you have close by, and just circle or make an arrow to the things that are not material. Hmm. The things on your list that are non material, because um, one of the first things, let's be honest, are, are your phone might be there or um, your car or your house. But look at the things that are non material, because that's what I want us to focus on for just a second. So, um, I am, I'll go ahead and admit it. I am the world's worst at it. But if you walk outside and just sit in a chair and leave your phone on the inside, you feel so much better. So it's the, the things like a sunny, breezy day or the smell of fresh cut grass or whatever it is, butterflies, whatever it is. Um, those are the things for just a moment that I want you to kind of focus on and then make it a, a, or a priority even, or just try for the next couple of days as you add to this list, because nobody said it has to be finished today. Um, try to add something that's non material because those are the things that you when you tear everything down to its skeleton really that's what it is like you know if it's your family or the fact that you live close to a food store you can walk and get your fresh fruit or whatever it's the little 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 things that bring us joy good carry on uh -huh. carry on one another thing I keep saying carry on and then I'm like, oh wait, I want to say one more thing because I'm I like to say words out of my mouth. But um don't even worry that you have to get something started and finished today. That's not the whole point of your journal. This is a, a living document. It's it you start something today, you come back to it tomorrow. Um on the side of my bed, usually, and now I've lost it because I had it earlier. I don't know why I brought it with me. I keep myself like a little tiny t notebook thing. Um, and it can even be because, you know, that's how I usually roll. It can be a set of um, sticky notes, or a sticky pad. And you've got a pin there because sometimes the greatest thoughts come to you as you're about to fall asleep. Or um, it could be a song that you heard or a quote that you read or a whatever. Just jot that down and then bring it to your journal to explore it some more tomorrow or whenever you can get to it. One of the things for me that's very, 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 very important is for me to have this time in my journal or in my sketchbook or to let's if we're being completely honest it's my time to just be creative because that's when i am my most full and as if when you ever get on an airplane and they say to you you have to put on your oxygen mask before you can put on everybody else's i am a far more present person i am a far more uplifted person or even a just an all around better person when I've had time in my journal. So I would love for you guys to just even make it a practice to have five minutes here in your journal because you'll be amazed at what you learn about yourself and um, how you grow even. Um, it's for me always I've just found some sort of creative as very, very, very important. So 
Ophelia, would this be a good time for us to tell them just a little bit about even the collaborative nature of what we're we're doing? Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, we can talk while they work if that's not too distracting. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's perfect. So we call today a journal play date because that's something that Ophelia and I do with another group of artists educators. Um, some of them teach, some of them teach art, and some of them, like myself, are um, more informal educators or um, even therapists. So um, coming together um, sometimes once a month, and um, when COVID happened, we started weekly. <laughs> now we've gone back to every <laughs> other week. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's when we need it. Um, sometimes um, it would be almost when it was not virtual uh, for a while. We went virtual. We uh, would bring like snacks and drinks to share and fodder to share. Mm -hmm. And um, Ophelia would sometimes bring a prompt and sometimes we just got together and we like parallel played would just work in our journals or work in something else while we talked and hung out. So, mm -hmm. um, and Ophelia, you sort of got things started with um, somewhat a little bit of an accident. You were filling yes. in. Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. And just a tiny, tiny bit of my background for a second. Um, I came to the teaching profession very sideways. Um, my degree and my training are criminal justice. And so I started my career in juvenile probation. And so then um, I had children and decided that, you know, it's all fine and dandy. And then I went into teaching and I taught history for 15 years. Um, I fell into, or I was a quilter at the time and I found an art store um, that sold fabric dye. And I walked in and legit my head, I thought my head was gonna explode. Um, and so I wandered around and just that became my second home for, I don't know, for forever, it seems now. And um, it just so happened that I was there one afternoon carousing, as I usually do. Um, and the director of education there, she was in charge of events. She said to me, like, hey, can you cover me on something this afternoon? Um, I've, I can't be here and I need your help doing it. And of course, you know, Philly in her true fashion said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 I'll do it. And then I realized later what I'd gotten myself into. I had no clue I was doing or teaching the Wake County art teachers. Now, I'm, I'm not a trained artist. I just am very, very, very passionate about art and art supplies. Um, and so I said, luckily, she told me as I was walking in the door to teach it, so I could not back out. Um, and so I, we taught that workshop. We had a great time doing it, and that's what spilled into a, hey, you know what? This was very good for our souls. Let's keep it going. And so once a month in Raleigh at that same art supply store, we all meet up and we have our journal play dates because one thing that I've found is this is all fine and dandy, and I mean, this is in my journal, and but it's also a community. It's also the friendships that you build. It's also the people that you can look at and say, hey, Michelle, why can I get this to work? And she says, oh, I know exactly what to do. That's the kind of push-pull that we have once a month, and we all learn so much more than if we were at home by ourselves. And we have such, it's just such a, a, a feeling that we have than we are at home by ourselves. Now, yes, my studio is at home in my house and I work every single morning because my, remember you put your mask on before you can put somebody else's mask on and this feeds my soul. And so when I do this, I am a better person. My students even tell that your mood is lighter and you just, you can be more present to everyone else because you've taken care of you. Um, so it's the, the community of it. We meet together. There are times when I have prompts that I give. I usually give those same prompts to my students. Um, there are exactly as in the classroom, there are times where in our play date with Michelle, some of us are will jump right in and some of us go, you know what? Nope, I just need to sit here tonight. 
and and scribble to run down the lead of my pen down. And that's totally fine as well. Um, so I encourage all of you guys to find the people. If it's people in your building, if it's people that you notice that, you know, in your hallway at work, that person wears purple every day and purple happens to be your favorite color. Hey, you want to go hang out and bring your sketchbook and let's play with purple today or what have you. It's that whole being together that totally makes this just the best. And I just thought of another resource that I'm going to add now to our Google Doc of resources. We'll share at the end. I was That's listening it. to a podcast by Brene Brown. Uh, um, this is a new book that I'm reading now, but the twins that wrote the book, um, Amelia and Emily Nagoski, um, this book is called Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. And it's really focusing on really women um, and the human giver syndrome and sort of getting stuck in a stress cycle. But mm -hmm. one of the things in that this podcast that I'm putting in the chat window right now, and I'll put in the resources later talks about is that um, self care is sort of the fallout shelter that we build for ourselves, thinking that we can do this by ourselves. So mm -hmm. finding that professional learning community, finding those people that support you and your development, personal and professional, professional, et cetera, and working together to look out for each other's mental health in this way, I think is key that we um, support each other as a community of learners and community of educators um, that we do this work together. So that's why we, the value of a journal plated is that could um, collaborative spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's, uh -huh. it's just one of the greatest gifts and I should back up and say, um, Michelle, in those play dates, uh, was one of the ones that encouraged me to be an art teacher. And fast forward, what, four years now? I, I went and she held my hand during that whole study for the praxis and all of the above. And now I have the world's greatest job ever. I'm a high school art teacher. So, um, one more thing I wanted to show you guys while you're working and um, because remember, it doesn't always have to be like a super pretty picture that you're doing. Um, I, I literally put my pencil down and legit made scribbles all over this page. And then I just come back in with maybe three or four colored pencils or crayons and just fill it in mindless, but it totally allows you those three or four, five, 10 minutes to just focus on nothing but nothing, if you will, um, to clear your mind. So that then when it's time to go read your child, the bedtime story or um, help that child with homework or whatever it is, you can feel more present because you've had some time to just do nothing but sit still with yourself. Um, another thing that I love to do, and I'm gonna try to find it here, is on a page, and you'll notice none of your pages have to be finished or perfect. On a page, I will just fill it with squares. And, and in those squares, then if I want to on Monday come in and write a word on Tuesday, if I want to come in and write a different word, or maybe I just want to draw shapes. Um, what I'm learning about myself is that sometimes Mondays are rude and Tuesdays are disrespectful. And I get it all out right here in my, my journal. Um, but it is, I guess what's most important for you guys is this container can be whatever it is that you want it to be. That's what I'm trying to hone in on. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be finished. It doesn't have to be polished. It's just you with your feelings spending time with yourself. Good. Yeah. How are we all feeling out there, everybody? How's it going? Leave or put questions in the chat because again, I was not watching at all because 
I got all into this. And so, um, questions? Oh, this is thank you very, very much. Ooh, I don't, that was very, very kind of you. Um, I just, this is what I love to do. And I feel as though this is my soul's work. It's we do the things, but then we also share the things so that we can inspire people to then do the things, if that makes sense, because then they get inspired and they do the things and they share the things and look at what we've done for this world, you guys. That's what that's what I love. It's we are healthier, more present, more happy people when we're doing the things that bring us joy. Now I'm just, I'm flipping and rambling. So somebody else. You want me, you want me to jump in and, and talk a little bit about. And let me ask you this. Did you bring your journals where you can yes. flip through if you don't mind? Because our <laughs> styles are so different that I love looking at yours. So I'll, I'll start by, I have different kinds of journals that I kept, I've kept through the years um, and tried different sizes. Um, even sometimes I also love collaborating. This is a journal that I share with another one of the um, teachers, Jody Aker, on our journal play date little group. Um, so sometimes it's writing. Sometimes um, I've tried different papers that are better for writing and different pens. I love to experiment. But a lot of my work, and I'm not sure how much you can see here, but I'm going to also share my um, my website where we've got some blogs. Um, talking about this journal play date and Ophelia's work, as well as some other um, educators that visual journal. But um, my work is definitely layered. My approach is I might brain dump and then come back or sketch or doodle in a meeting or something like that, and then come back and, and layer on top of things um, again and again. And sometimes, like, I'm not even sure you can see here that there's a visitor badge from one of the schools that I visited on top of junk mail, on top of writing. And sometimes I also use paint to cover and somewhat disguise and push down uh -huh. things I might not want to share with everyone to sort of camouflage that. Uh -huh. um, I have three different kinds of journals, the morning pages that um, Ophelia and I were talking about that sometimes I actually draw Sometimes mm -hmm. I just write, so mm -hmm. it's a um, more of a lined notebook kind of journal, and I use this always in the mornings, but sometimes I also use that at night. I always have an art journal, and then this is something about two years ago, I was going through um, what I call a mid-career burnout. Um, um, I think it was really the beginning of a mid-career or a mid-life crisis, really. And I went through a leadership program where I developed some self care habits to get me through some of that creative burnout because it is real for educators, especially those who are constantly in a creative industry and constantly sort of giving away our, our, our thoughts and our ideas. But I think all teachers are feeling that burnout right now in huge ways. So I, I know y'all can identify, but I had to separate out my work journal from my art journals because I, I needed to create some boundaries for myself. Huh? Huh? And over the last year or two, I've started experimenting with bullet journals. And I found that that's a great tool for me. This is my table of index. I sort of, my bullet journal is not a traditional bullet journal. I definitely um, alter and cut pages and stuff like that. But even some of the calendar pages, um, which for some reason I can't even pull up a calendar page right now, um, have a little bit of my sort of messy layered style that you can see. Mm -hmm. So a combination of these lined writing journals, art journals, and a planner of some kind have been part of my self-care of how I sort of process all the stuff in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And that processing, whether it's in the morning, a purge journal, or during the day, in meetings, whatever it is, is, is vital to um, my professional development. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to go ahead and jump in and talk um, to see if anyone else, oh, this, I don't know if, did I share my actual 
journal. So this is um, my gratitude that I started at the beginning of this. Oh, I see some people um, got into bullet journaling. So I'd love to hear about some of the things that in the chat window that you found that help you if you how mm. you use bullet journaling and are these some things maybe that you've also tried in your classroom. Um, but this is my gratitude that we started today where I started writing and then I also collaged some of that fodder, wrote on top of it. And I also tried something else. Um, Ophelia that I think that they might like um, a duck. I call them duct tape transfers, but also That's mailing tape. Nice. Yes, if, you, if you've got some mailing tape, you can put the clear side on top of a receipt or anything that has writing. On it. Okay, just like this, where the tape itself is going to bind to the ink. And then you take a little bit of water and I'm just going to wet the back of it and rub the paper away. And yep. what that's going to do is it's going to let some of your um, print still show and you can even be artistic and play with the varying amounts of how much of that you show. I like some of the paper being opaque, but then you've got like a little remnant of your fodder that you can collage into your journal on top of stuff. So it creates mm -hmm. a shiny surface, but it's a quick, easy way to have some layers in it. So, mm -hmm. um, so lots of different things that you can try and um, just as far as, absolutely experiment and play and layer. And, mm -hmm. and I think also build in some of that reflective practice. Absolutely. Because that's where it's, it's important to have this layer of brain dump, but that additional layer of what Ophelia was doing by using color, using paint, whatever it is to go back in, there is a mindless nature to this, mm -hmm. but it's actually full of sort of tapping into um, your subconscious and and sort of grounding you another mindful strategy to ground you into prioritizing and thinking through things, but in a very different way. Mm -hmm. So by her going back and adding color to those things that she's grateful for that are less material, really pulling those layers out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So do we want to share some from other people if they want to share? We might not have time to go into a lot of detail in sharing things, but Ophelia? Oh, no, I was just going to say one more thing that um, totally helps if you, I don't, just to do your, come to yourself, um, a lot of times I will, my students come in, you can feel the energy's kind of off. I will like dim the lights, put on some music, and all I say to them, and they I write it on the board, right now I am feeling, and they get to go for it. And they get, we keep boxes of collage here, we keep glue sticks and scissors and they get to go ham on what they're, they come back and they write words like, oh, I didn't even realize I was excited. I thought I was mad today. What's going? So just that's another prompt for you to put in your arsenal or write in the back of your journal of things that you might want to journal about. Oops, I don't know where my hands went. Journal about. Um, Take the time for you. That's five minutes. Throw some color in. It's all good. Ophelia stops talking. So we have shared, I'm looking at the chat window and trying to respond, but we, we have um, created this handout I'm going to put in the chat window now. Whoops. Two, let's see if that works. Whoops, not yet. Um, copy. Oh, the journal fodder junkies. I just realized I had their sticker. I know Michaela mentioned them too. They're they're wonderful. They're um yeah, absolutely. So in they're actually mentioned as my very first resource in this Google Doc. Um that um, the journal fodder junkies introduced me to a new way of, of sketching, a new way of, of truly visual journaling and a, um, 
a documentary photographer named Dan Eldon. Um, mm-hmm. the, when he passed away, his mother published his book of visual journals that was life changing for many people Absolutely. that now call themselves visual journal um, artists. So um, we included that. We included the um, Julia Cameron's Artist Way that we mentioned being helpful for us for that sort of purge approach. Um, that's one of the many, many tools that she. Um, addresses and she talks about burnout quite a bit. Um, I also included Eat, Pray, Love, um, a wonderful mindfulness and art of drawing book that um, I've known many art teachers that use that as sort of like their warm ups with students to get them sort of channeled in their, um, their finding their zone, finding their flow before they start class together, even virtually. They've said it's been um, effective. Um, a couple of articles and then the podcast that I referenced earlier. Um, I also did a series last year that was um, as part of that leadership program that I talked about where I featured Ophelia and several of the other artists educators that we work with. We did a 30 day um, social media challenge. So if you use Instagram or Twitter and want to look up um, hashtag journal care, um, you'll see a lot of the um, the prompts and that website that I just included there includes um, the prompts that this group of educators and I created together. And um, several of them also did this with their middle and high school students. So you see student work as well as educators work. And then um, I also included the link to the NAEA blog post series between all of the educators and myself. We had over 30 blog post last May that was exploring this idea of visual journaling for self care. And there's lots of resources there that you can um, dive into as well as the four interviews um, that I included in the handout um, so that you can hear a little bit about how each of those educators use visual journaling for their own self care differently. So um, questions or comments. I just really went really quickly. Time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) And Brandon, if you want to jump into slide 15, uh, since I already sort of touched upon some of the resources. Let's see. Absolutely. And um, oh, I'm not actually sharing. So I was just going to say also that uh, the the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote um, Eat, Pray, Love, is amazing, applicable to everyone, not just um, her her journey as a woman, but uh, really discovering the creativity in every single human being. It's the sort of book that I want to buy for every high school graduate. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, oops, everything's clickable in ours. Uh, we just wanted to ask you if you could take a few minutes to think about how you could apply this in your classroom. I know that Ophelia and Michelle talked a little bit about it. Um, If you're following along in the recording, then uh, go ahead and type this into your reflection journal. But if you're here with us today, if you can type into the chat, how would you use this? We have so many people here who are not necessarily visual arts teachers. So I would love to hear how you would explore this in your classroom. Daily warm up for reflection, but especially for AP Studio Art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Opportunity to leave their stuff at the door. That's great. Yes. I love that. Um, yeah, feelings uh, for their week. If you are a music teacher, maybe they're journaling, you know, for for what they hear in music. Daily warm ups, just a general tool for SEL. Mm hmm. Uh, AP art sustained investigation. Maybe, maybe it could be a really great way to layer, you know, for close reading. You know, what if kids were were creating art with highlighters over the top of mm-hmm. a reading passage? You know, that they were reading. Using prompts would be amazing for middle school students. Yep. Oh yeah, middle school. God bless anyone who teaches middle school. Special education. They can um, express themselves. Wonderful, yeah. These are amazing. 
new materials for them to try. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a great way. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. Great, great, great. Um, and so if you have any further questions, we promise that we will stick around um, for everybody to chat at the end. Oh, I love it, Emily. I know Emily teaches theater, so it's a great connection as well. So we have our survey for CEUs here in the chat. Um, please make sure that you choose today's session, which is mindful making and that you triple and quadruple check your email address because whatever you put in there is what we will send your um, your certificate to. So it, it has to be <laughs> correct, otherwise it bounces back to me. If for some reason you don't get it within 24 hours, please do let me know. Holy moly, we're gonna have to take down all of this chat and paste it into a slide at the end because these are amazing <laughs> ideas. Um, Totally out of selfishness, I just wanted to invite anyone who is uh, interested in turning on your camera and holding up your journal, not to show off what you've created, but instead to inspire and help along anyone else who might feel like maybe they're uh, stuck on where to go next. That would be really fantastic. So I will be brave too and share mine. I love so. it. I just got excited. Sorry, I started screaming. I'm sorry. Ooh, you guys, Michelle, or was that somebody that just did a screenshot? That that was me. Thank you. I would <laughs> love for you to share it, please. Yes. Oh my Absolutely. gosh, I love it. Thank you so much for allowing me to be selfish, you all. Mm, that thank was you for capturing that too, Brandon. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope you all can still see the slides. Okay. <laughs> um, the last thing I am cognizant that it is 501. If you need to go, we are we are done for the day um, with this session, but you may continue visual journaling for the rest of the night if you so choose. Uh, we would love to invite you to show off how amazing you are um, at self care and SEL by receiving your digital badge. And the way that you can do that is to make sure that you've attended the Teach Happier session, which is archived in our archives, the Mindful Classroom, which is next Thursday. Um, and then you get to choose your three other sessions that um, count towards your, your badge kind of in a choose your own adventure way. Um, we love the A plus schools of North Carolina has put together several videos as well that are guided self care. Um, and so choosing two of those, and then you can submit your request just by clicking on this image. Uh, NCMA also has an amazing course this summer, all about art and SEL. And um, I'm going to do a poor job explaining it less than uh, Michelle could, but. Um, you will you can access all of that information from the learn and CMA learn website. The symphony has put together a whole bunch of musical meditations that you can use in your classroom. They're all three to five minutes long and have images from our North Carolina state parks and oops, that is not what I meant to do. And then um, we have our own SEL resources on our page as well, including webinars guidance documents, which actually, if you are not an arts teacher, exist in every single subject, how to integrate SEL into your standard seamlessly without doing another thing. And we are so excited to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, the North Carolina Museum of Art is actually putting on a session next Tuesday um, as part of this series, or we're including it as part of the series. And uh, then we have Mindful Imagination, which is laughter and clowning and drama all on Thursday. And we hope to see you there. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh my gosh. Thank, Thank you so much. For Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle and Ophelia. We really appreciate you being here. You bet. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. I did. Are you going to put the link for the survey in the chat? Sorry. Yes, we'll repost.